Right. Oh. I have been mistaken for mistaken before. Camera. Oh. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Sadie. We're here with Bin Bang TV interviewing Pig Face or various and assorted sundry members thereof who are. For the use of brackets. One. Would you like to introduce yourselves or uh, leave it up? Joan of Arc. <laughs> Peter the Great. On vibes. So cringe. <laughs> and here's and Matt Schultz. What a surprise, Matt. Oh, oh, so, oh, 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 look. Yeah, William, okay. I need to talk to you out here. Do I? Yeah. Time out. I'll be back in on the. Now we're back on. All right. Well, we've met what half of the lineup now at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And who's, who's the missing? All the groovy half? bits. Who's we're missing? missing Bill, Raven, and uh, Ogre. 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 Uh, Lee Culper. Uh, I don't know. And whoever else is around? Yeah. I, this was organized out of the last ministry tour, and when everybody who is now in Big Face involved and with that at some point No, no, um, it's David Yao, is uh, a, a part-time member of Big Face, uh, Trent Reznor is a part-time member of Big Face, Ed Esch from KMFDM, um, but yeah, almost. Raven wasn't on that ministry tour. Well, I knew there were very guests here and there along the way, so yeah. I know they popped in. So, is this an ongoing project then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, uh, with every day, it's turning into more of a thing. It's definitely going to escalate from here. I'm sorry. It's definitely going to escalate from here on. So we can look for uh, more recordings in the future? And yeah, we're doing, we're filming and uh, videoing and acting most of the shows. Um, just to document really how different they are, because every show is different. Are, are you figuring out making any music videos out of it? Yeah, there's a video. We just shot millions of feet of 16mm in the studio while we were recording, and we've been shooting constantly, because none of us knew when this was going to end. You know, yeah. So we just thought we wanted to document it all. Every gig is different. We're doing songs now that we weren't doing before. Uh, the versions of the, the songs we did on the album are just changing every day, mutating. So we wanted to capture it. Um, boy, I just lost my head in mind. Did you lose your I lost it exactly, derailed. I'll be the producer and help. <laughs> after the ministry tour as well. I started after I'd done Pig Face. And uh, then, conclusively, I left ministry for Bolton Cox to concentrate on uh, this and my solo career. And uh, uh, well, boy, listen to the album, it kicks ass. And you do have uh, the video of Stowaway. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. Shot at your house. Really? <laughs> my cat's in it. No, but me and Leo are happy to talk. Yeah, so the thing, the, uh, the shock waves of turmoil around Pigface are causing the, just about everybody to leave for the, any other projects that they're in. So this is sort of sucking it up and becoming a new focal point rather than yeah. a side project. A new groovy focal point instead of a wishy washy, washed out pile of crap. Awesome. Can I say that on cable TV? Crap? Okay. That, that one's okay. 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 Yeah. Can you say, um, fuck, okay? No, we have discovered that one, we can't, I guess. Okay. Did you get a letter saying that you couldn't? Uh, I personally have We're not. And, okay. I have no clue. So I'm saying it myself, but, uh, everything else goes. Uh, well, what's so are, you, are you taping any of the show tonight for your viewers? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the, the reason we're filming most of the shows, we're doing 16 millimeter video tonight, is that nobody here will know 
how different tonight is yeah. to right. last night or tomorrow night. Let's say Which is what? It was really different from last night because it didn't play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Are you going out to Detroit from here? Yeah. yeah. Well, where else have you been? We kicked off the tour in uh, <coughs> Houston, Texas, yeah. did four days in Texas, uh, three days in Florida, and kind of worked our way up the East Coast. So about halfway through at this point? Yeah, it's almost just, exactly just over halfway, halfway yeah. yeah. We were asking earlier uh, if there was another ministry tour in the works. Who knows? <laughs> No idea. Is it up in the air question? I mean, you used a, I liked your terminology, it's very appropriate. <laughs> well, it was unintentional, but uh, maybe. Uh, um, but crowd response. Crowd response has been wild. Yeah, it's been really great. Yeah, it's been questionable really awesome. ethics from some promoters, you know, see the members of Killing Joke Ministry, Nine Inch Nails. Revolting Cops perform all of their hits, which has <laughs> nothing to do with Pink Face whatsoever. But um, for the most part, we knew that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, it's, it's been, been people have, uh, promoters have, have acted with a, a degree of integrity unheard of from that particular class of individual. People uh, have a hard trouble, have to understand that um, what we do with Pink Face really has nothing to do the bands in the original came from. It's completely different from the Which is quite a huge list of bands. What I've seen is ridiculous. Like, yeah. 2015, <laughs> if you count all the different projects that everyone's been involved. Um, how do you feel about the term industrial supergroup that's in? Well, I think that's the I word. I'm just really like, A, being pigeonholed anyway. And B, like, we're kind of like the I word. It's just really silly. Yeah, it's really we are industrious. Well, but we're not industrial. Quite right. Well, to me, industrial was always much more difficult, very extreme noise music, and it's come to be tagged on the. Yeah, it's just. Uh, well, it's just give me a label, give it to anything that has that certain kind of edge to it. Right. You know, it has nothing to do with, you know, true early industrial music or throbbing gristle stuff or right. industrial records or any of that. It's just, it has nothing to do with Industrial music now is a bloody disco. Exactly. Georgia so Marauder with, <laughs> with a tin can. I've been, I've been very tempted George to... George Romero with a fuzz box. Yeah. So yeah. 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 To be hired at, you know, DJ and uh, to do an industrial show and bring in some industrial music. I guess yeah. what they would do with it. But oh, I, I probably wouldn't get the job then. I think we've uh, some of the concepts and ideas beyond Pink Face are verging on is surreal. Quite right. The idea of changing a band on the road, I mean, what happens is the audience sees this band, wow, oh, going wild. But, but if you could follow a band for two weeks, you'd see them the same thing every night. You'd realize what a sham the whole rock and roll or gerbil wheel in a gerbil cage this whole thing is yeah and we're really messing with that unfortunately you know nobody here tonight will know except that we still have this energy and this vibe and this chemistry that i have never seen the like of on stage or off with a band and uh, and so i guess the audience will see that well i imagine you need to do it just to keep yourselves awake and from being burnt out on well, you know I, just running through the same how many surrealists does it take to change a light bulb? A fish! <laughs> How many folk singers does it take to change a light bulb? Seven. One to change the bulb and six to sing about how good the old one was. <laughs> How many grooves does it take to screw in a light bulb? Don't know. Druids don't screw in light bulbs, they screw in old grooves. <laughs> How many Jewish grandmothers does it take to change a light bulb? Yeah. Eh, it's alright, I'll sit in the door. <laughs> <coughs> More fun than it is. Death anyway. rockers take a screw in a light bulb? None, because it all registered in the dark. <laughs> How many alternative press reporters does it take to screw in a light bulb? A Twenty. One to get the ladder, one to get the bulb, and eighteen on the guest list. <laughs> Come on. Now, is that Come alternative? On. Press in a generic sense or referring to a particular newspaper? How many drummers does it take to screw a light bulb? Silly, they have machines to do that now. <laughs> That's great. How many drummers does it take to play a ministry? 
Two. Two. One to play, one to shake the head. Shake the head. One to spit in the air and shake the head around. That was Bill Reefland's graffiti on the German dressing room wall. Kill and Joke and Revco were flip flopping on the right Yeah, we have like heavy uh, duty graffiti, graffiti wars. Uh, graffiti they're there to see the same time. So did anyone have to face up to it at the end? Oh, no, you did one, basically. Yeah. I'm not well stocked with questions, so... How many psychiatrists have taken to change the light bulb? Just one, but the light bulb really has to want to change. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> That's really good. Right. Are there any questions you're thoroughly sick of answering at this point? Where did the name Pigments come from? It's funny you should ask that. <laughs> Smile at Well, I didn't ask it, I got you to do it. Uh, Pigface was the name of one of the very first bands I was in. Right. Bring one back to me. And uh, the, the band was named after the deaf lead guitarist wife. And I used to, we used to spend our time backing strippers. When I was 12 years old, the first naked woman I saw was in a reverse view of an overweight stripper's surface of the moon pepperoni pizza bum. <laughs> Surrounded by all these like guys going, yeah! I could see all their faces like, whoa, all the way, darling. And it was just a mystery to me. Like, you know. <laughs> So that's where the name Big Plates came from. from. I guess it's something that just stuck with me and made such an it's impression. You, you particularly identify with uh, yeah. the man. So. Matt Schultz! Yes, Mark Matt. Dr. Matt Schultz. Yes, what, what is this mysterious Lector instrument? Lector to you. What? Lector. Lector. Yes, come on, be in our see. interview. Ask yourself a question. Tell us about your instrument. What do you want to know about? <laughs> uh, the one he plays oh, on no. stage. That is. Well, it's four feet, or six feet long, and, and four inches in diameter, which is about to that camera. <laughs> Why, what do you want to know about the instrument? Well, all I've seen is the initials ATG, and then, yeah. which mean nothing to me. It so. means anti-tank guitar. Okay, and is... It is... <laughs> Two separate instruments, actually, with six strings high and six low. And um, each of the six strings is a single gauge wound steel. And the four low are woven gates, and one is tonal and one is for percussive. Okay. So it's actually two instruments on the same stick. Does it resemble a conventional guitar or do you play that same well? Um, no, it re uh, basically resembles a very large stick. Okay. <laughs> and lots of strings on it. Yeah, big Oh. Well, one thing I was kind of curious about is like, given the variation in music between the different bands. Yeah. Um, how how do the writing process go? We just roll tape in the studio. And just, can I walk through that? It's over here. Yeah. Can I walk through this? Yeah, sure. Oh, Mr. Steve yeah. Silver! I've always been in love with Jason Pettigrew. I don't care what he says. And I'm wearing rings right here to prove this. <laughs> um, yeah, we just, we just rolled tape in the studio and said, okay, and then people would just come in the studio and say, do whatever you think you want to do. Do whatever. Steve, we've run out of beer. Comes off the top of your head? And for some people, that was very uh, an intimidating situation. Well, it's certainly a unique uh, sort of way. Of, um, it's the way we used to do pill, except we do we do like 15 minutes and then chop it down to form a song and then layer it. But it's the same thing. Dangerous. I'd imagine the various bands' backgrounds would have given a fresher approach to coming in. Uh, as well, that you're not working with people who've been working on the same things that you've been working on. Yeah, it was a, it's a blast to work with other people. It's like a holiday. You know? Well, that was part of the original be intention. Be well, be not, not, not to have a holiday, but, but just to, yeah. music is, is supposed to be 
an energy level and a chemistry when you make music. That's what making music's about. And I don't know anybody that's doing that. I don't know anybody that's doing it. It's all like, listen, you know, we've got to pay for the house now. We've, you know, we've got this bloody mortgage to pay for. We have to come up with a hit. There's going to be a dance call. We won't, we won't get the crossover to the club chart. We need the club chart action for the licensing deal in Japan. You know, what the hell is going on? You know, I, I certainly don't want any people, part of it. It's true, a lot of people don't seem to be concerned with the, the vibe, if you will, of music anymore, no, but with making tell, it. I tell but. people, we've got some problems with licensees in, in, in Europe. It's like, well, ah, they don't understand what we're doing. Uh, because it doesn't fit into a category. I, I have a record label. I would, I'd love to be handed projects like Pink Face every day of the week. You know, something that's stimulating and a challenge to the ears and the mind. You know? But, um... It seems much of the music business has gotten so formulaic and so, you know, just striving to uh, achieve a certain goal that, that music is really incidental to It's a goal that's defined, defined by a number in somebody's meaningless chart. How good is it? It's number four. What, what the hell is that? You know. There's a, uh, I think there's a great deal more uh, <clears throat> musical purity in Pig Face, uh, whereas uh, I think in a lot of other bands and bands we work with, when we come off stage, it's kind of like good set or bad set, whereas in <clears throat> Pig Face, whether it's good or bad, we actually individually sit down and discuss songs and talk about so certain parts in songs, maybe jam we went into after a song. We actually discuss the actual performance of each song really. I think we do a lot more listening on stage than in the average situation. The, the concept, it, I mean, it actually approaches jazz, you know, what we're doing. I think it's really obviously not musically, yeah. No, no, obviously not musically, but, no, but conceptually. Yeah. Right. But although the problem I have with jazz is most jazz these days is, is masturbatory technology bullshit. and technique. Technique for the sake of technique is king. You know, and it's like, okay, now we're going to leave the stage while uh, while Paul plays an hour and a half <laughs> on one string. <laughs> Great, you know. But there's Kenny G, which is the opposite of that. Really? Yeah. I have not. I have heard Kenny G. But one thing I have made is elevator music. music. It's misconstrued as a genre, but it's not. Huh? Yeah. So, I mean, you have that in the jazz world. Too. Why it's not? Always, it's always well. extreme. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't. I see jazz. Jazz concept questioning more musically than most bands I've seen. That's why I would say Pickface relates to that in some way. But we were also questioning the whole concept of band, tour, record, everything. Well, because you have the latitude to vary your set and your shows from show to show to show, and there's that's a lot of that old jazz sort of attitude. We try and throw in elements to stimulate us from night to night as well. Bagpipes in New York, the bass player from Guar joined us in New York, drummer from the Luna Chicks, drummer from Brian Brain, two of the guys from Silverfish, um, Trent Reznor. I mean, every night we try and introduce elements that we know will change the chemistry. But even without a different element, we change the chemistry ourselves. It becomes interesting. I think that. I, as I've said a few times tonight, I think there's very definitely in the, in the scene in America and, and probably in Europe as well, um, but definitely in America, I think there's going to be a before Pink Face and after Pink Face. Because there's so many bands and people involved in the Pink Face project, we have no choice but to go back to our other projects and carry with us our experiences from Pink Face and have that change our other projects and the way we go about things. That sort of ripple effect. Right? Yeah, the ripple effect. Bringing back what you learned with this group and applying it to the others. Well, it'll be interesting to see then uh, down the line what sort of effects may... Well, I tell you the effect it's going to have on Killing Job. I'm leaving Killing Job, so that's the effect right there. Is it devoted to this specifically? No, to devote to things that are worthwhile. Although well, they've been... Back there we go, Killing Job. It's not worthwhile. What, what about the label? Is uh, Pig Face like the exclusive band on the label? Or no, that's ten. Pig Face is the tenth release on Invisible, but it's the first under a new um, collaboration with Touch and Go. 
touch and go manufacture and distribute invisible, which gives us the distribution we need to 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 put out projects like Pigface without jeopardizing possible sales. Um, we did eleven and a half thousand records last week of CDs or whatever it was. Um, and the, and that the, the, the ripple effect of Pigface's involvement with Invisible and vice versa is that the other bands on the label will, will have more visibility, more access to more stores. Mm. So that there will be ripple effects from this Pigface in other ways. Yes! There are the, many, the effects of we know what we're doing with our business. And our dealings with bus companies, hotels. So we have a very good business set up. And it's going to change the way all of these bands do business with hotels and put their tours together. Is there much of a threat of uh, like so many people from all these other bands like leaving those bands? Yeah. Chris isn't involved in Revco or Ministry anymore. Um, I'm going to do one more thing with Killer I might do another album. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what Raven is going to do. But what I think, uh, not to interrupt, I'm sorry, but whether or not we leave our bands or not isn't really that big of a question. I think it's probably going to cause us to think a great deal differently about anything else we do musically. Like, well, we'll things. certainly make time to do this again. No, I'm just thinking that that's going to talk about that as well. That's going to cause such a massive shake-up. That's going to cause such a massive shake-up in everybody's rosters. It's going to be yeah. like... Well, one of the hard things about doing this tour is that everybody's so involved with different projects. Right. Well, so I know Cam and Dan was just here last week. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I guess. Yeah, Nick is on the record. I'd really like to have... Uh, we did one show with Cam and Dan and Trent. And uh, so Nick and Ash... Uh, got to play with us as he does a track on the Pink Face album. Yeah. Um, I hope that our paths can cross with Jesus Lizard because Dave Yao uh, worked on the Pink Face album, worked with me and Chris, uh, Dave Sims, the bass player, worked with me and Chris on another project that will be released sometime later in the year. So, yeah, they were like just to... what? No, they're, they're coming, they're not taking a nap. Yeah, see, that's a drag, it would have been great to have them. That would have been a nice Mac, Mac is a great drummer. We've had three, four, five drummers on stage. I mean, it would have been great to have Mac up on stage. He's wild, you know. But what kind of logistics are involved in putting together a tour like this? It's that insane. Is, it's it's insane. Huge. Um, Leela at the in Invisible has done a lot of uh, the logistics. We've got a couple of extra people working there to help. Uh, there's been so much press, so many interviews. It's been insane. I'm lucky if I get time for half an hour a day just to like chill out. I guess that's my my hour and a half on stage is my little, my <laughs> little rest like from it all. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah. Now this is a this, this is a very cool concept. The whole thing. Is like, what's what's really cool is that it was always a cool concept. But for it to turn from a concept into a very, very harsh, nasty reality, that's what's really cool, is that you know, anybody can put together a wild studio project, you know, mail out tapes all over the place, have a list of people. But for this to exist in such a solid form, I think it's inspiring to a lot of other people. It's so inspiring to me. That you managed to pull it all together and take it on your own. It's a, it's a credit to, to everybody that's involved because I mean, we, we, we have a really nice bus, we have one of the nicest buses that you can take out on the road, but there's certain, um, it's certainly not the level of, of comfort of, of like a killing job European tour or a skinny puppy tour. Um, I think it's a credit to everybody that, that there, there seems to be little or no ego involved from, from such a caliber of, of performer. With the number of people you have involved, I think that probably would have almost had to have been weeded out early on. That, you know, you couldn't have one person coming in and making it a star project or to function the way it obviously is. That's, that's, that's what's great. You know, that's really, uh, that's 
really great to see it. It's great to see Olga running around on stage having a good time and smiling. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's really having a good time. It's, it's worth it for that. Three three it's worth it for that. You know? yeah. Do you find that you're like getting a lot of like pig face fans now, as opposed to um, I think individual? Yeah, I mean it's very early. The album's been out for two weeks. Yeah, but we don't run for three weeks. But I, it's, we're gathering some uh, momentum. Yeah. Well, people are starting to yeah, people are starting to listen to what we have to say in the press and put that together with the show and the record because that. It's not just a record, it's, it's this whole thing that we're doing. Just recently, and like, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Like, in the last two weeks of the tour, I see my kids in the audience actually singing along with the record, you know, the lyrics and stuff, which is pretty amazing because the stuff yeah, is considering how very recently yeah. out, and also it's not the most intelligible lyric It's not factor. sing along the pig yeah. place, you know. <laughs> so that proves that, I mean, people are listening to it deeply. Yeah, that's very cool because, uh, I mean, obviously, when you've got something like this, you know, you're going to have fans coming from each individual and have representatives and things like that. I think it's a, cha it's a challenge to the audience. You know, they come and say, oh, I like ministry, I'll go and see Bill and Martin and, and William and Chris and Olga. Well, it's nothing to do with it. Right. So it's a, it's a challenge that, that I think most people are, you know, responding really well to and, and uh, and are inspired that we're like we're changing things around and doing something different. So yeah, have a listen to this. You know. Do you think that you catch people by surprise by what you do that like haven't heard people? And when people when people that come to a second show, I think it really hits because they see it's different. We do things that we don't we don't know what we're doing. We'll just start something. Oh, and it's like whoa. You know, and Oprah will be there with some lyrics. And it will yes. mutate, and the rhythms will change, and the tempo will change, and it will mutate, and it will become another song. And people that have, have seen two shows and see that happen in different ways, I think it really like it's like whoa. Plus, it gives more respect for the band as well that they can do something like that. Right, they're not tied to the same yeah. set list every night. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty groovy. I have to go to uh, have a piss. Well, should so we do I think we're at the end of the Huh? Okay, well, this has been Vindamag TV with Martin Hickens oh, and friends from Pigface, and uh, we'll be catching uh, you all later. Uh,